Hi guys, it's Laura and you're watching Laura X Annie and today I'm here with the last in the Sherlock character arc series, John Locke! So I'm here, I'm excited, we're very close to season 4, I'm nearly crying. So okay, so let's start with season 1 and episode 1. So obviously they meet and there's that instant connection of the whole phone, oh god my hair, the whole phone um, exchanging and stuff and I'm just like ah and he obviously first of all is just like straight in is like yeah I want John as my flatmate and I'm just like cool beans but also in the first episode he kill John kills for Sherlock like that's one of those things that you're just sitting there like okay you've just met this guy he's your flatmate and you've just killed to save him do you know what I mean it's like that instant that you know that there's a connection and that's what we see, the audience can tell that there's an instant connection there what with John saving Sherlock's life in the first episode and obviously that is repaid in the second episode in Blind Banker when um, John gets captured and Sherlock saves John so it's sort of like you know I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine but also you can see that Sherlock's not the type that would willy nilly save someone. He doesn't seem like from the first episode when we see how he talks to Anderson and Donovan you wouldn't think that he would go around saving people but obviously he saves John in the first episode and um, he also cuts in and share uh, say that and John's date which is very interesting because it's like oh why is this guy that's a flatmate cutting in on his flatmate's date like what is this? But also it's very important to see that moment when they're in Sebastian's office and Sherlock calls John his friend and John calls him a colleague and it's like oh you could have just said friend. Moving on to episode 3 this is where Moriarty is introduced and um, I'll always always take to the grave Sherlock's face when John comes out speaking Moriarty's words and Sherlock's just like shit please tell me this is not who I have been trying to find all this time who tell me this isn't it and obviously it isn't but um, it's heartbreaking to have that moment where Sherlock is really like oh no what if John's been Moriarty all along how I kind of really really fallen kind of for this guy that is Moriarty but it's not and this is where we see the their friendship pushed to the limit and I think this is where a lot of if you read a lot of John Locke fan fictions this is where they seem to start the love thing comes in and I think it's true because I think if you were to go through if you had a sort of certain amount of love for somebody and then suddenly you're pushed to the limit like through a traumatic incident like a bush crash or a car crash or something like that but this is like a bombing at a swimming pool then obviously it brings you closer together so I think that's the moment where it changes um, I definitely don't think it's love at first sight I do think that John and Sherlock like there's stuff we didn't see behind the scenes and I think that's what kind of makes Sherlock fall in love with John and I think especially after the pool that's when the moment is oh shit and it's just the build up to it and then in season 2 episode 1 we can definitely see that John is jealous of Irene and he says Hamish if you're looking for baby names so he's definitely jealous of Irene because obviously Sherlock has only showed this like attention that Irene gets to John before and then suddenly Irene's getting this attention he's like I know it should be at me and I think John is very much of the whole I'm not gay and it's sorry very much kind of like right okay mate we get it that you're not gay but you definitely feel something for Sherlock so just admit it and I feel like this is him trying to push it down but in the process of pushing it down he's like getting more jealous and protective and then in episode two we see that John is really really trying his hardest to help Sherlock but Sherlock's not wanting any of it because he's scared and he's never been scared before but um, I love Sherlock's line with the I don't have friends I only have one and then on to episode three oh the Reichen back fall oh god no that phone call on the roof of Bart's is heartbreaking and that is the ultimate decoration of love like I that the I love you is obviously unspoken but it's 100% there and it just makes me want to cry. I love it so much. Then on to season 3. So in episode 1 it's the bonfire scene and Sherlock's eyes when he realises John's in the fire when he's on the motorbike is just like <gasps> oh and it was that I, I burst into tears at that moment. I was like oh no oh no Sherlock realises it's John oh no and then um 
it's just kind of like we see John realising that Sherlock's been changed and he's not the same as he was um, but he's kind of realising that Sherlock isn't such a bad guy after all, he does have a heart and in episode 2 the wedding completely for the audience gets to see Sherlock's heart shown on display, like full on display and also the point when he tells John and Mary that they're pregnant and John like grabs his neck in that little moment between them and then it stops because they realise that John's just got married and it's like oh maybe hard I was just like I can't handle it and then episode 3 like, I can't even talk about his last fight because that was heartbreaking that whole that I love you once again was so close to being spoken I can tell that I bet Sherlock's cogs were running through his head and he was like there's something I've always wanted to say to you and I guarantee he was about to say I love you but then he realised that he couldn't say it because Mary was in tarmac as with Mycroft and he couldn't he realised that now he couldn't say it he could have said it on the roof but he didn't and then he didn't say it and it's just the the the, the Moffat and McGate is as much as they like to put us off the set they've been building up to this John Locke moment over three seasons like this whole thing of the you know the bit on the roof and then this the tarmac it's ultimately going to be and I love you there will be an I love you at the end of this season <laughs> I'm going to cry but anyway yeah it's heartbreaking and it's beautiful uh, the Bumble Bride the fact that Sherlock was reading John's blog going away is just like I can't take it, I just can't take it, I, 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 it's beautiful and I can't take it. Now into season 4, I think we're going to get a kiss, I do, there's been a lot of people talk about it but there's been more talk about it this time around than this hiatus anyway since Setlock came out than any other time so I'm wondering if someone knows something, I'm really creeped out, I'm like, I want to know what's going to happen but then again I don't, I want to like, I don't know what I want, I just, I'm really, <sighs> And then obviously Mary and Joan, I hope, get divorced um, so that Sherlock and John can be together. At least I just want to see John move back in with Sherlock. Like that would that would just make my day if they just move back in together. I'd love it. And that is it for my Sherlock character act series. Don't worry, you'll see more of Sherlock in the new year when the series comes out. And I have a few other little bits and bobs I'm going to throw in um, next year. So I will see you guys on Thursday for five books to buy some for Christmas if you're late Christmas shopping. I'll see you then on Thursday. Bye!